What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook. Welcome back to another Craft and Workshop video. In this week's project, I'm going to show you how to build this awesome Bluetooth battery powered boombox made out of solid walnut. This has been a project I've been wanting to build forever and I'm finally getting around to it thanks to the sponsor of this week's video, burns matic and I'm just so happy with the way this thing turned out. It sounds amazing, it looks awesome, and I just love it. So let's go ahead and get started with the project. I built this boombox out of solid walnut, so I started by breaking down my rough lumber into individual pieces. And if you wanted to simplify this build, you could just use sheet goods like plywood or MDF for the speaker cabinet, or just buy pre-milled lumber. After cutting the boards to rough length at the miter saw, I squared them up on the jointer, planer, and table saw. So I purchased six quarter or inch and a half thick walnut for this build and wanted a final thickness of half an inch on these boards, so next I needed to resaw all my boards, basically splitting them in half. The resaw blade on my bandsaw was <laughs> extremely dull, so I decided to do the bulk of the resaw work over at the table saw. To do this, I first marked the center of the board using a marking gauge, and then set the fence so the blade would pass right through the middle of the board. I also added a feather board to help keep the board pushed up against the fence. I wanted to make this cut in multiple passes, so I started with my blade about an inch above the table and made the first pass. I then flipped the board in for in, making sure that same face was against the fence, and then made the pass on the other edge of the board. I repeated this process for all the boards, then raised the blade high enough so that about three quarters of an inch of material would be left in the middle of the boards, and I repeated the steps with the higher blade and then moved over to the bandsaw. I set up another feather board at the bandsaw to help keep pressure against the boards, and then resawed all the boards, splitting them completely. Finally, at the planer, I could get the boards totally flat and remove that small ridge left in the middle of the boards. Before gluing up the panels, I needed to trim some of the boards and remove some areas that I just didn't like aesthetically, like the sapwood areas. And once all the boards were cut to size, I arranged the boards in the orientation I thought looked best, and then labeled them so I wouldn't get them mixed up during the glue up. The last step before the glue up was to join each edge to make sure I got perfect glue lines, and I used this little trick I picked up from my buddy Jay Bates, where you joint two mating boards with the opposite face of each board against the jointer fence. And you can see that I faced my pencil line towards the fence on this first board, and then away from the fence on this second board. And this effectively negated any minute error in the squareness of my fence and ensured that I ended up with a perfectly flat panel. Finally, I could glue up the panels, and I didn't use anything for alignment on these boards, mostly because there were just so many of them, so I made sure to add clamps to the ends of the seams just to help keep them in line. After letting the board sit in the clamps for a few hours, I scraped off the glue and then passed them through my planer again to get them cleaned up. With the boards all cleaned up, I could rip the top, bottom, and side panels to final width of the table saw, again using a feather board to help keep consistent pressure against the fence. Next, I set my blade to 45 degrees and started cutting in the miters. First, I cut a miter on one end of each of the boards that made up the frame of the box, and with one end cut to 45 degrees, I could then set up a stop block on my miter gauge to cut the miter onto the other end of the boards. And this ensured that my top and bottom panels along with the side panels were all exactly the same length. Finally, I could glue up the box and used a combination of strap clamps and corner clamps for this. And I ended up with a perfectly square box and gap free miters, which is always nice. So with the frame of the boom box glued up, I could cut the front and back panels to final size based on the final size of the frame. And I did that over the miter saw. Next, I needed to get the holes for the speakers cut into the front panel, and the speaker kit I used was the C-Note kit from Parts Express, and it comes with MDF enclosures, and you could easily use a flush trim bit combined with those enclosures as templates to cut these holes, but I figured I'd let the X-Carve do the work for me. I modeled up a quick design and easel, which is Inventable's free cam software, and did a test cut on a piece of half-inch plywood to make sure everything would fit right. Once I got everything fitting nicely, I made the final cut on the walnut panel, and this whole operation only took about 13 minutes, super quick with a quarter inch bit. After the x scar finished, I cut the tabs holding the leftover pieces in place and then cleaned up everything with a spoke shave and some sandpaper. I wanted to recess the front and back panels into the frame slightly to give the panels a more secure fit. So next I set up my router table to cut a half inch wide by eighth inch deep rabbit. And I cut these rabbits on all four edges of the front and back panels making sure to cut the rabbits on the long edges first just to help prevent blowout on the ingrain. Next, I could glue the front panel onto the frame and I made sure to use plenty of glue and clamps for this. You want an airtight seal on speaker boxes so you really can't go overboard with the clamps and glue here. 
I knew I wanted a pretty heavy round over on all the corners of this speaker box, and that would mean removing a good bit of material from those corners. Because of this, I wanted to reinforce the corners, and I just used some wooden blocks on the inside of the speaker box to do this. I used a combination of CA glue and wood glue to attach the blocks, and the CA glue would basically hold the blocks in place while the wood glue dried. I also needed to add some more blocks to the inside of the top and bottom panels, and these are where the screws that attach the back panel, which I wanted to be removable, will connect. The last piece to add to the speaker box was the center divider, which I frankly kind of forgot about. And you can see that I needed to notch out those blocks on the top and bottom to make room for the divider. And I just cut it out of some half inch Baltic birch plywood. And again, I made sure to use plenty of glue here as I wanted an airtight seal. I also needed to add another rabbet to the center of the back panel so that it didn't interfere with that center divider. And I cut that at the table saw. Next, I clamped the back panel in place, pre-drilled and countersunk some holes, then added one inch screws to hold that back panel in place. So with the box built, I could move on to getting it cleaned up. First, I used a flush trim bit on the router table to clean up any of the overhanging areas on the front and back panels, which I purposely cut slightly oversized. Once the edges were flushed up, I swapped over to a 3 8 inch radius roundover bit and added a roundover to all the edges of the box. And it always amazes me at how much of a difference a heavy edge profile like this makes. I really think this roundover just made the look of the speaker. Finally, I could install the speakers, which was really simple. I just made sure the screw holes were square to the cabinet and used a self-centering drill bit to pre-drill the holes. And I used some three quarter inch black screws to attach the speakers and could finally get a beauty shot from my social media. Next up in the build was the part I was a little bit nervous about, which was building the crossovers. And this was actually my first time ever soldering and there were a ton of connections to solder here so you can see why I was a little nervous. And in case you don't know, crossovers split the audio signal between the woofer and the tweeter, sending those higher frequencies to the tweeters and lower frequencies to the woofers. And again, these crossovers were part of that C-Note speaker kit I used for this project, and there are extremely detailed instructions on how to wire those crossovers included with that kit. But basically, I just needed to connect the different components of the crossover itself, and also add wiring to connect the crossovers to the speakers as well as the amp. And while I'm soldering, let's talk about the sponsor of this week's video, burns matic I used both the burns matic ST500 cordless soldering iron and ST2200T detail torch on this project, and they're both perfect for use on soldering jobs. Both torches are butane powered, which means they're cordless and completely portable, perfect if you need to solder something away from an outlet. I also used burns matic rosin core electrical solder for this project, which was extremely simple to use, no flux required, and whether you're a professional tradesman, DIYer, artisan, crafter, or even a chef, burns matic has the right product for countless different projects. So to learn more about the soldering torches, solder, and burns matics other products, check out the link in the video description below, and thanks again to burns matic for sponsoring this week's video. After soldering the power jack to the leads from the amp board, I could strip the ends of the speaker wire and add these crimp connectors to easily connect the speaker wire to the speakers. So with all the wiring complete, I could move on to adding holes for the various ports, LEDs, switches, and the carrying handle. And this was actually one of the more tedious parts of the build as a lot of those components had different size posts. So I had to use a caliper to find the correct drill bit size to pre-drill these holes. I also needed to use a Forstner bit on the inside of the cabinet to allow the components to feed through. And most of these parts only had a threaded area of about a quarter of an inch in length. So I had to recess these holes to allow those threaded areas to protrude through the cabinet. I also added some rubber feet to the bottom of the speaker cabinet just to keep it from rattling when playing music. The last holes I needed to drill were for the ports on the bottom of the cabinet. And these ports were an inch and three quarter in diameter and I don't own an inch and three quarter drill bit so I needed to get a little bit creative here. So first I drilled an inch and a quarter hole which was the closest size bit I had on hand with a Forstner bit and then used the X-carve to cut a template. I then mounted a flush trim bit in my router table attached the template to the bottom of the cabinet with some double stick tape and routed out the hole. And obviously you could just buy the correctly sized Forstner bit, but I couldn't find one locally. This saved me about 20 bucks and I thought it was a pretty clever solution. With all the holes drilled into the speaker cabinet, all that was left to do was to sand everything up to 180 grit and prep for finish. For the finish, I went with a wipe on polyurethane, mainly because I had just enough left in the can to use it all up on this project. And I wiped on three coats, letting the finish dry about six hours between coats. And I just love the way this finish popped the grain on this walnut. It's absolutely beautiful. 
I also sealed the inside of the cabinet with some spray polyurethane, which wouldn't be necessary if I had used MDF or plywood for the box, but I figured this would help to reduce any seasonal expansion and contraction. Once the finish dried, I could get to final assembly of the cabinet. I added this half inch sound damping foam to all the inside faces of the cabinet except for the front baffle. And the foam has a peel and stick backing and I just cut it to size with some scissors, making sure to cut around any of those holes I had drilled earlier. I could also get the crossovers and amp board mounted to the inside of the cabinet. And I used screws to do this and just screwed them into the center divider. I needed to add a groove to the center divider to allow the cables to pass from one side of the cabinet to the other. And I just used a round rasp to cut in this groove. Finally, I could install all of those switches, LEDs, rubber feet, handle, and ports, attach the back panel, and then drop in the speakers. And with the speakers installed, this boombox was finished and all that was left to do was to try it out. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. I am just super happy with the way this thing not only looks, but sounds. I'm a bit of an audiophile, own a bunch of really expensive headphones and speakers and that kind of thing. And I am just really very impressed with how nicely this thing came together as especially my first speaker ever. I will have a detailed write up on this whole project on my website. I know there was a lot of kind of nitty gritty stuff. I couldn't really go into all the electronic stuff and that kind of thing. It was just a little dull for video, but I will have links to all the materials and electronic components and all that stuff I used below in the video description as well as in that blog article. I'll also have some sound clips at the very end of this video. So hopefully you guys will stick around for that. Uh, if you don't already, go ahead and get subscribed. I put out new project videos like this pretty much every week, although this one has been one of my more exciting projects in a long time. Also ring that little notification bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. Also down in the video description is a link to these new shirts I have, these build it yourself shirts. Love the way these came out, go check those out for sure. And last, I have added that YouTube membership functionality. It allows you guys to kind of connect with me behind the scenes, month to month, really cool. I'll have a link to that somewhere on the screen as well as in the video description below. But uh, hopefully you guys enjoy this one. And without further ado, let's hear some sound samples of this thing. Thank you.